The Navy Medicine Model is world-class care anytime, anywhere. And we take that seriously. Um, and our research community uh, also takes that model very seriously. You look at the number of people who are deployed uh, in this pandemic, 7% you know, of the four deployed medical personnel are Navy, Navy medicine personnel. And so we have people all over and they are in the fight against COVID-19 um, to keep our members safe. Infectious diseases has been a core mission of the Naval Medical Research Center for a very long time. So we are already pre-positioned to fight this invisible threat. We have the resources to be able to look at diseases like this, emerging infectious diseases, and get on top of it pretty quickly. We're able to answer very complex questions about what emerging pathogens are, are circulating, uh, what is infecting different populations. Um, we're able to characterize those pathogens so that we have a better understanding of, of what we need to be able to counteract them what the medical providers need to be able to treat those that are infected with those. The Navy response is certainly a very robust one and it is one that's involving a lot of people here at NMRC that are really trying to meet those unique operational needs of the sailors and Marines. That being said, uh, we're certainly not doing this in a bubble, but continue to work with our other interagency partners, as well as our sister services in the Department of Defense as well. And that will continue to be the approach. It really is kind of a, an all hands on deck uh, approach when it comes to not just NMRC, but also other uh, research labs around the United States where we continue to share and discuss and support each other's research in order to make sure there's not duplicative efforts, but instead that we're synchronized in what we're doing and making sure that we meet our niche just as the other services are meeting their unique operational niches. This disease is very infectious. And one of the things that gives this virus an advantage is that it is infectious enough to transmit rapidly from person to person, but that it also is invisible in many, in that, that it's asymptomatic. So you may have a number of people, especially our healthy force that might be on our ships, that are asymptomatic, but they're carrying the disease. We know that the median duration between uh, when an individual is exposed to the virus and when they actually manifest symptoms can be five days. We think that they can shed that virus up to 12 or maybe even 24 and potentially 48 hours before they even start to experience symptoms. So you can have uh, an individual who thinks that they're healthy and be exposing other individuals to the viral infection, thus allowing it to spread very, very quickly throughout um, our forces. We don't know a lot about this infection, which is really why we need to rely on research in order to answer many of these questions. So we have two vaccines. Uh, that we're working on what we call a phage vaccine, um, and we have our uh, uh, polysorbin vaccine. In reality, it takes quite a while. I mean, if you are going at a normal pace to develop a vaccine for a particular viral infection, it could take, if, you, if everything runs smoothly, five to 10 years. And what we're trying to do because of the severity of this epidemic is compress that five to 10 years into a year and a half, and you can imagine the effort that it takes uh, to do that. So in this current situation, like COVID-19 situation, we need to develop vaccine very rapidly. So the work here, what we do here is actually related, all of them are bacterial virus. It's called bacteriophage. These virus are unique. They only infect bacteria. They don't infect us. Using this phage particle, we can develop vaccine within very short period of time. Um, making vaccine for COVID is not an easy thing. So we have to be very careful and we have to understand the COVID-19 virus properly and select a very unique uh, sequence from this virus to make a safe vaccine. Uh, we have been working seven days a week without a break. Um, oftentimes we are working, you know, 15, 18 hour days. The battle rhythm you kind of get into is similar to what you're on deployment. You start off early in the morning, it kind of goes on later on to the evening. Um, and for me, it, it somewhat feels like some of the battle rhythm I had when I was in Afghanistan. We're fighting this common enemy of, of COVID. So we're marshalling the forces and it's all hands on deck as we fight it. Uh, I mean, the mission, that's, that's what it is. I mean, you know, being 
a microbiologist uh, in, in, in the Navy. I mean, that's what we're here for. That's what we're signed up for. Uh, I was involved in pandemic H1N1, you know, back in 2009-10. And, you know, this is similar to that, although it's a much larger um, and much more different moving parts. You know, there are definitely some tough days where, you know, energy levels go up and down. But, you know, you know that you, you see the, I wouldn't say you see the end goal, but you see the impact that you're doing. And hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get there in the end. It may look bleak now, but there will be a vaccine and there will be drugs that, that will uh, be effective in treating this. I know right now we're uh, in a scary situation, uh, but I'm confident with our sailors that are actually on board and deployed right now, that helping out, supporting the, uh, the pandemic, that uh, they're, gonna be a, they're gonna do a good job to actually meet this mission and find a cure. I can, we can assure you that our team is out there to help out and support and meet the mission. We're gaining understanding every day of how this disease works, how it progresses and how to stop it. And I think we're coming to understand how this is. It's gonna be, a, as um, the Surgeon General says, this is a, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Uh, so we're in it for the long haul, but I, we'll be fine at the end. Yeah, you know, ultimately the, the mission is worth it. Uh, we have a really energetic team. We have a team that is so dedicated to the mission of a healthy fighting force and we're here to do whatever it takes to make sure that that happens and that we can support the force and make sure we can continue to fight the nation's wars. We do this work for the, the sailors and marines who are out there on the front lines and so I would say to our sailors and marines who are uh, in the fleet to stay positive. I would say to know that uh, you have a medical community that is dedicated to finding a solution and keeping you healthy, keeping you in the fight. Again, this has been a 24-7 evolution. This has been an all-hands-on-deck evolution. And for those of us in the Navy and the Marine Corps and in the service, we understand what that means. There are so many people who are dedicated to working on this virus and understanding more about it that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that, that people need to heed the warnings from public health, they need to stay safe, they need to wear their face coverings, they need to keep their six feet of separation. And if they can do that for us, then the work we're doing on our end to try to find additional ways to protect them, that collectively will get to that light at the end of the tunnel.